Hello party people, thank you for coming back to the Rad Movement YouTube channel and we are going to be doing another installment of Tattoo Education today. Uh, it was something called along the lines of the Rad Academy, I mean the, the Rad Tattoo Academy or Rad Inc. Academy. Rad but, Inc. Uh, school. Rad Inc. school. Rad Tattoo School. Tatness. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna be doing a little bit of a blast over uh, on Sir Jeremy today. That's me. Yeah, yeah. So and I can uh, actually give you both perspectives of the client and the apprentice today. Cool. All right. So let's get uh, right into it. Here we go. So we start by showing you the finished product. Um, parts of this tattoo I stenciled on. Parts of this tattoo I drew on. Uh, parts of this tattoo were heavy blast over. Parts of it were light blast over. Uh, blast over slash cover up um, of some of my own work uh, and somebody else's work and just like incorporating things. Uh, but here we are. I made this gnarly arm uh, from the Google uh, zombie arm. I put it into Pony Lawson's tattoo stencil app and uh, we turned it into a stencil. And this is the, the, the first stencil placement. I kind of added both of these. So this first one we didn't quite get. Um, or Robbie didn't quite like how much it was sitting on the car there. So this is the second placement. Um, and as you can see, it's a little bit farther to screen left. And it's not as far, it's not as cr encroaching on the car as much. So there's only a little bit of the, the hand hanging over where before it was covering half the window. Right, yeah, and I only wanted a little bit of hand hanging over so that way we could, as a sleeve, we could incorporate the whole thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm drawing just a guideline. Um, you can see there's some geometric stuff that uh, no longer suits him. So we're going over that geometric stuff. We're bringing the black up from the hand uh, into the arm. And the cool thing about it is like, the arm at the bottom of it that we're drawing on him turns black and his hand is black so it's a it's a fun play with the the push and pull of the black um and i'm really loosely roughing in these these guys here i'm glad we have this in the video because like my sharpie looks like shit. um but it's always it always turns out good that's why i wanted that in there you know? right right no i love that um and he's and like going over the stencil yeah, like you know you're i'm bringing myself like the elements i couldn't read right um, so I'm just like making them legible so I don't have to think as much while I'm working. Uh, that's what that is there. And you usually um, start with one color and then that's kind of the, the sketch. I start then... with a lighter color and sometimes I do a good enough sketch right off rip with that right. lighter color that I start tattooing. Um, but most of the time I'll start with like a red or an orange. I uh, end up with like a blue, a purple, or a brown. I think you green. switched to black in this. I may have switched to black. Is what yeah. you did in this. Because it starts to get annoying. So I'm like, fuck right. this, let's just go black. Right, right. Um, black is a little bit harder. Right, which yeah. is what you switched to here. Black's yeah. a little bit of a harder tone to fuck with. And I'm going real light, because I'm just like, still feeling the waters. I don't know exactly how this is going to look yet. Um, I'm building this, this whole image as we go. Um, and I came, I came with, as a client's perspective, I was like, okay, man, I want a hand coming out of my existing hand, put a fucking arrow going through it with some chains wrapped around, and he had the idea of making the chain, you know, the arrow breaks the chains, um, and that's kind of, that was the whole concept of this. Yeah, 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 and uh, we played, um, we played together on that. Uh, it was cool, because... You know, you, you test me all the time. You always make me do like creepier shit. I like but, a lot of, I like really evil looking shit. And that's so not <laughs> Robbie's style. So it's always fun to bring him just nasty, satanic shit. Well, the fun thing is like and now- Just I'm, see what he does with it. I, yeah, true. Cause now I'm learning how to like um, have fun with it uh, and make glowy cool stuff, yeah. you know? And yeah. like toy with textures and this and that. And it, it's actually cool to look at this tattoo heel while we're doing this voiceover. Which um, I will, I'll go ahead and put a, a healed picture as well hell yeah. after this, because um, it has been about two weeks and it is yeah. healed. And so the thing for me is, uh, I always like another session on everything. Um, double, triple dipping is always going to be the, it's going to give you the strongest hat. Um, so I always, I never mind going back into a tattoo a couple of times. Uh, I, I don't consider it a touch up, I consider it a resaturation. Um, an oil painting doesn't get done in one layer. Uh, you don't call those extra layers touch-up layers. You call them layers. <laughs> you know, they're part of the tattoo. I mean, they're part of the art. So I um, build in, in layers. This is a very one-shot style tattoo. I am pleased with where it sits. 
I could be okay with it sitting as it sits, except for this one spot where we missed uh, ink. <laughs> it was late. It was yeah. Late. This is also being done at about midnight right now. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy and usually jumps in the chair uh, when I'm done. And it's never um, planned. It's kind of, you know, off the cuff, which is another thing for, you know, apprentices to kind of know that, you know, you get tattooed randomly sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't come into it looking to get tattooed, but if you're lucky enough to get tattooed, fuck yeah. Yeah. Me and Jeremy were already doing a bodysuit on him. So this is just a way to, like, educate with his bodysuit. Um, him and uh, the YouTube generation. You guys listening, you know, if yeah. you are a new tattooer, this is, you found the right channel because um, this is kind of just a novice and a master of tattoo art, or, uh, tattoo artistry um, and me just picking his brain and recording it. That's really what this is about. And there's a 35. There's that big one. So we did yeah. mention that in a previous video, that yeah. toothbrush mag. I call yeah, it. I'm using the 35 mag there. And that's where you're kind of using the corners there, so you're not using yeah. the needles. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing some whip shady stuff, so it kind of just feathers out. Uh, that's some more saturated stuff because I'm just blacking in between the chains. But it's so nice. You see the way it just like rocks and rolls and just like gets everything in there. And it's a very nice. I love it. It's a very nice needle. Like gets a lot done fast. Do you have any tips for people? A, a common problem I did see on a lot of other channels discussing was when they are packing in color up to a line, they always have like a little gap between the color they packed and the line. Like, do you, what's your process for that? Uh, go, so, to, go to the line. Yeah, go to the line if you can. Um, and if you can't, bring in a liner. To get rid or of that little. Or bag, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes you do it as a line uh, and sometimes you do it as a, uh, like you use that needle to like kind of shade, you know, just cause it's called liner doesn't mean you can't use it to shade. And so right now we're going over, uh, parts of the flames that we did, uh, to incorporate some over and under effect. And you see what I'm doing right now, I'm completely freehanding this, this, uh, green, goozy blood uh, stuff that's flying out of the uh, the hole in the hand. I thought it was important to include this because, you know, that's not a common thing you see is someone just literally freehanding with a tattoo machine. Yeah, yeah, while it's running too. Oh, correct. Um, because one of the things I will do is I'll take the cartridges uh, dry with, with ink on them and I'll kind of like right on the skin without the machine being without on. the machine yeah, running. just the cartridge by itself he'll dip it in ink and but this is such an organic texture i remember i've been tattooing for 26 years so like i've got a lot of experience yeah. in a lot of these things it's a blood texture i've done i've done blood texture a number of times and so the sometimes the, the less planning you do with a blood texture the more sweet dick it turns out. You know what I'm saying? Um, and this, I'm brushing this in because I don't want to commit to a line. Um, Was that a? That's a, like, I think that's a 14 round liner. Okay, yeah, I believe um, that, if I remember correctly, that's what you said it was. So I use, I use a lot of 14 round liners, especially on a larger piece too, because I can get lines as small as a three with a 14 round liner, um, or as bold as a 14 round liner. And I, I, I just included that because the way you're doing that is not like the quote unquote standard way to run a line. No, no, because, because what I'm doing, I'm, you know, I, I, let me see the tattoo. Yeah, it's black up there. So what I did is I just kind of like roughed the idea of that in. And then uh, as with the other video that we did earlier uh, with, with the way I, I lined those with a, a mag. With a mag, yeah. So it's just suggesting these lines and then I line it the rest of the way with a mag, basically. Right. Um, so, or not even line it, but I build the shading of it with a, with a mag. And you can see there's some varied line weights here, um, just cause I, I filled some areas in a little more and some I didn't. You can see that it's not perfect. Um, that's the coolest part about this. You don't have to be but perfect at the, the whole end, way through. The end process. It's pretty darn close. It is. Um, yeah, you know it's pretty I mean? darn. It's, it's pretty darn solid. You're building, and like I say all the time, it'll talk to you. It always does. And by what, what I mean by that is, you look at it, and when I say it'll talk to you, it'll kind of speak to you in its own way. Like, hey, you need to do something here. You need to do something here. You know, right. Like, and like, I don't have the answers all the time, and sometimes the answers come when I say, all right, what am I supposed to do next? And 
I know it's weird, but you, you've seen it in, in action. You know exactly the process of letting it'll talk to you. You're the one that gave me that verbiage. Like, I look at it as like, uh, sometimes you just kind of, you're playing with a bunch of little kids. You know, I'm rocking my needle real far on the side there. Yeah, that was... Um, but you know, you're playing with a bunch of little kids and sometimes you just gotta be patient and wait for them to give themselves up. You know that's what I'm saying? One, that was the one, the analogy, and that's how I, I brought mine Yeah, in. yeah, because because I, I couldn't figure out colors this one time and I was like, all right, well, when I'm done playing with this color, I will find the other color to play with. Right. And I viewed it as children and playing with kids and being a kid myself playing with them. Um, that's such a cool thing with, with tattooing is like, it, it, you don't know how it's going to turn out. No. It just kind of talks to you throughout the process and you just build it. And it well, at least in my process. In, I know in your guys, process specifically. You know, I know guys, um, Sean Duffy is an amazing tattooer. This guy, me and him both, uh, we did the same competition for at a convention. We were timed for six hours with each tattoo. I was finishing my design elements ten minutes before I was tattooing. He already had a practice run in his brain of how long the set was gonna take, up to 15 minutes of six hours. So he finished in five hours and 45 minutes. This is you, real quick, sorry to interrupt. Just no, that little okay. point you did with the- With the mag, yeah. The corner of that mag, look how sharp it came out. Just that, that's utilizing your mag to- Absolutely, yeah, just absolutely. And if, if you wanna go in and tighten it up even more with a liner afterwards, have a blast with it. You're allowed to. Which I don't even think you. Uh, I'm not you sure. did hit it with white, and you guys will see that yeah. in a minute. The glowing effect is what you're about to see, also. Yeah, but so the, the point I was making there, you know, somebody can do it so specific, and the way I do it is not specific. Um, yeah, uh, you're gonna find your own style. Right? Absolutely. That's what everyone keeps telling absolutely. me, even though I haven't done a single tattoo. I'm I'm that new. Like, I'll find. Some You'll style. figure it out. You'll right, figure it out exactly. along the way, and and doing, the, you know, following my program that I've created. Uh, you know, my curriculum and, and, and apprenticing, you know, it works. I've seen it work. I've got successful uh, protégés that, that made shit happen. Um, and now they're killing the game. So, and it didn't take super long with them. Um, and it's not going to take super long with you. And it doesn't have to take super long with you, viewer. Um, if you're in the right position, if you know your cross-contamination, if you know how to stay safe and healthy and clean, uh, if you love and respect yourself, your clients, uh, and your environment that you're in, um, you will have a very fruitful tattoo career. Right now what I'm doing, um, I'm adding elements to that uh, blood type thing, but I'm also doing some shading with a liner um, and just kind of scratching it in there for funsies. And while this is, I feel like, a good spot to point out one of the best pieces of information I've gotten from yeah. you is that if you look at your needles as paintbrushes, like not as yes. a 15 this or a 12 that, if you look at the size of it, you're it's like- It's not a liner or a shader. It's, it's a brush. It's a brush. Think about it like a brush. A big brush it's will a make tool. A, a larger thing. Yeah. A small brush will make a smaller thing. Yep. Smaller marks rather. And that's like really open my eyes to and the whole new world. So that's a 27 mag where I was using a 35 to do a lot of the background, or a 27 buck pin, which is a 25 standard. Um, Yeah, right there, you're just going into the chains. Yeah, yeah, just just uh, playing with the push and pulls of the blacks. You can see things coming together. You're kind of pushing the ink more than like packing it in, you know, with the tight little circles. That's more of like a pushing. So this is definitely, um, yeah, definitely a kind of scratchy, uh, whippy, loose, mm -hmm. um, just Which kinda, is kind of what I feel like the tattoo called for, just the style of like, you know, like an angry, you know. Right, like and a like. Dark, evil. And we go in with dark greens in there, so that blends yeah. together. And you can see we're leaving uh, areas open. Yeah, I was going to say. If you around the fingernails. On that. Yeah, well, we, you know, I'm, I'm intentionally leaving that open because I don't know if it's going to be white around there. I don't know if it's going to be yellow or green. I still haven't figured out how the whole tattoo is going to look. But as we're working, I'm learning. Uh, it's telling me what it's supposed to do. Um, you know, hide and seek is happening, and I'm, I'm finding things, and I'm seeking the hiders. And we didn't even, <laughs> I'll mention at this point, we didn't even consider color at this point. We didn't really know what color was going to be. Yeah. Um, Eventually, we, just, we chose green. Yeah. You, he chose green, Robbie did. So yeah, we're so just going to do black and white. I'm banging white into the fucking chains right now yep. um, before even doing color, which uh, 
you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you can't do that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> That's what I've learned. You can do a lot of shit they say you yeah. can't do. That's what I've learned um, working with Robbie is that it's like, fuck what everyone says, man. If you get the results you want, that's you can do what you want. You can, yeah. It doesn't matter. Look, if you're not causing an amazing amount of trauma, if you have happy clients, um, if you're not being unethical, uh, if you're being morally sound, if you're putting love and care and kindness into your art, that's it. you know, like, <laughs> You can do whatever you want, you know, do a clean tat, make people feel good. Um, you know, that, that's really, that's how I live my, my life. That's how I I run my business. Uh, That's how I teach my apprentices confidence. Uh, confidence is a thing. I'm sure you can see the parts here where I lack a little bit of confidence with my needles and I'm just dusting things and you can see when I get real confident, but the whole way through in my heart, I know I'm going to do a great tattoo. And you can see I'm banging over some of this black with white because it kind of milks out the black a little bit and grays it up some. That's like um, that blending you were talking about. Yeah, you know, but just like like colored pencil blending almost. Yeah. Uh, tattoos tattoos don't blend as good as colored pencils, but they're very, very similar. Um, and if you are interested in fucking with colored pencil stuff, uh, Prismacolor. Which is my favorite thing. Dude, Prismacolor on vellum is my favorite thing. Yeah, I just literally got a set of Prismacolor and... Two days ago, I'm stoked to uh, work with it. Have you ever tried it on vellum? No. Vellum is like tracing paper, so it's got yeah, almost no tooth. Got you. Um, so it's very smooth in the blending Take notes, process. people listening. Yeah, seriously, vellum is my favorite way. The colors turn out brighter, the blends turn out bolder and blendier. Uh, so it's really cool. So now I'm going in with the lightest green because apparently that's the color I knew I was going with. Didn't really know how everything else was going to work out. So I'm just kind of running through things. And it was literally um, like, he was like, looks at me, he's like, you know what would be dope is green. I was like, fucking dude. Yeah, because we were like, red blood, yeah, and then yeah. we were like, purple, and then we were like, green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were like, who the hell says that has to be blood? It could be goo, it could yeah, be whatever you want. it could be want. alien blood. This is like, art, it doesn't have to be a certain anything. Exactly. It's, it's, you know, in your head. Yeah, and we're having fun with it. So obviously now I've decided, oh, we're going to throw some deep greens, and now I'm going to blend my blacks off of my deep greens. Um, and you can see how I build my, my art. It's very simple. Um, uh, that I, black ties really well into that dark yes. green because it's just a slow transition from my black hand right. all the way to that light green towards the top. And the contrast is really nice. When you want these glows and you want these bold colors, lots of black, lots of dark, that's going to make your bolts pop. Uh, it's going to make your brights bright. Uh, yeah, you dark know, next to light is going to be lighter than light by itself. Absolutely, and you just got to know how to do it. You got to you got to work with and your balances you putting, properly. Putting a giant mag into that tiny little mm-hmm. corner, which is and you can see so it's amazing. going in, but you know it's also not at sometimes because I'm just making it real fast and just kind of not not committing. Yeah, yeah, and this is you a little bit a little bit more of that blood is where you're throwing up top. Yeah, there. the green with bloody stuff. Yep, with a mag, yeah. because that stuff I want it to be more soft focus. So I definitely wanted to do Maggie stuff up there, so that way it's not so uh, stark and outlined and stuff. But you can see, I'm dropping whites in now into the glowy areas. Uh, you know, doing some white in the base of the arrow. Uh, and you guys can kind of see how it's coming together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so now, uh, at this point in time, we have all this whole this whole area above the the hand and and in the and the arrow that's all backgrounded so like i'm just kind of I'm, I'm going where it's telling me to go now you're working listening. off the foundation you put in there and you're kind of um, bolding yeah yeah you're just building air, bolding yeah exactly yeah throwing my lights um you know coming back in with some darks i think the farther you get in the more it does talk to you it's like okay you got this foundation now oh this needs to be done this and right the, and you see that more and more. you've seen that with all the tattoos i've done on yeah you. And that's the cool thing because we're doing a bodysuit on you. <clears throat> you really get to see the whole thing. And like this sign, I remember right around this point, I was like, yeah. <clears throat> what do you want with this sign? Because so, it's pretty mushy. And you were like, yeah, I don't care. So I think we killed it. And right? that's, yeah, that's something that is good for, you know, new apprentices, new tattooers to, to know is the playing off other tattoos. And sometimes we don't make those decisions until literally right here. He's like, you know, do you, we can barely read this. You know, it's like five years old. Um, should we kill it? Because that he, Robbie said it'd probably be better for the overall aesthetic of the tattoo. And I was like, kill it, man. That's and then, and then stuff like this is in no way or shape or form a disrespect to the original artist either. Yeah, my, this is just like 
somebody changing the art on the walls of their home. You know, like you don't get mad when somebody takes your art from the mantle and hangs it up in the bathroom. My good buddy, you know? my good buddy Alex did this, that Mercedes, that was my first Mercedes you guys are about to see. Um, and that sign just like, it was just really small letter. That's a good thing for new artists to realize is that if you do really tiny font, it's gonna, there's a saying, bold will hold in the industry, I believe. I've heard yeah. that a lot. Yep, yeah, it refers to tra traditional yeah. mostly, but go ahead. Right, which is, that's a good correction. Thank you for making that. Um, but like these tiny lines you can see in that sign, those are just gonna mush together in 10 yeah, years. And absolutely. you're not gonna, you already can't read it. It's only been maybe three, four years tops. Right. And for me, I try to keep it simple, stupid, but bold will hold as well. Yep. Uh, just in a different fashion than, you know, your traditional artists are gonna say, I'm not traditional by any sense. Yep. I'm very unorthodox in so many ways. Um, I use a lot of white. Um, I, I play with things. I. I'm loose, I don't care. You can see where we kind of brought, where you brought that finger over the car. Yeah. That's a very cool, you know, playing off another piece of art that already exists. Yeah, we're doing white outlines and that car, that that still isn't covered, that sign. Oh yeah, so it's, I it's getting there in a second. Yeah, um, and I just said I don't care. I don't care about what people think is what I mean when I say I don't care. I care so much about my clients. Um, but I've noticed like, if I've held an idea to myself for years, years later I'll find an artist I look up to doing those practices that I was told I couldn't, that I was hiding from everybody. Oh, I shouldn't do bloodlining. And then, you know, I've, then one of my friends took it to Nate Whitfield seminar, and he was like, "Oh my God, to Nate Whitfield, bloodlines everything." And and Timmy B and Frank Lenatra at the time were like, "We do our lines last." And I was like, "Yo, that makes so much sense. Now I don't got to commit to these lines." Lines last. That's, that's why. That's why I do the lines the way I do, that I sketch them in because I don't want to yeah. commit to them. Unless I know I need to. Yeah. If I know what the lines are gonna be, I commit to it, but I don't have to. Um, now I'm just dropping white highlights here and there. Uh, you know, I just, everything is organic, everything flows. I just kind of do it as supposed to. You can see the way I do it. It's very, um, just very loose and flowy. Um, you already hit it with that, that, what was it, yellow? There? Yeah, um, it's actually a radioactive fallout color gotcha. from, uh, Starbright. from Starbright. Yeah, it's a, it's a chartreuse yellow. Okay, we didn't mention in this video that Robbie does use Starbright inks. Yep, I am a sponsored Starbright artist, but I love Starbright inks. Uh, they are my favorite, um, and I'm glad to be back home because I started with them and now I am tattooing with them so many years later. And this is when you get to just blacking out a lot of dead space. And just connecting the two tattoos Correct. together and turning it into a whole family sleeve. Um, yeah, uh, and there's there's the, the sign. Getting black. That's when we decided, yeah, next the sign. And then we build into the dog that we did. Right. Um, and you know, you can see if you look at these tattoos and these videos, everything is not perfect. Uh, most of your favorite artists aren't perfect. Uh, I want you to know that. <laughs> uh, this is why I preach multiple saturations. As I look at the dog in the video, I'm like, man, I really want to go back into that dog. That's you know what I'm saying? That, that dog is a one pass. This car is yeah. a one pass. This yeah. hand, everything, one pass. So all of this can be hit and will be hit again in the future. Absolutely, yeah, because I love making things stronger uh, and building them better. And now I'm just, now I'm just running around the arm and just yeah. <laughs> like a little black bandit dropping black everywhere. And that's, um, I threw that in there to kind of, I think stretching the skin is a big thing. It is, you it's know. a huge thing. Cause you know, you're working around the elbow. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna use the body parts that bend to stretch the skin to your advantage. Head tattoos are some of the easiest to do because the skin is always taut, um, tight, taut, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, when you have an elbow or a knee, bend that bitch, man. You know, when you have a neck, bend that motherfucker. Always use the body's mobility uh, to your to advantage, your advantage. Correct. Um, because if you don't, um, you're gonna end up fucking yourself hard. So this is the so end here's result. the end result. Uh, here we go. Um, strong, bold. Uh, I love it. I love the way his sleeve is coming together. I love the way the black from his hand comes up to the black on his arm and the hit in the the art arm. Um, so yeah, this is all coming together. I'm really loving how it's how it's feeling. And uh, as time goes on, we'll be doing more videos to show you more of. Uh, Jeremy's sleeve progress or bodysuit progress rather but there you go guys thank you for watching hopefully it was valuable hopefully you learned something um, and if not hopefully you just enjoyed that sweet dick tag yeah bitch we'll see you next time peace
like that. Oh, yeah. Nah. I'm like, hey, you want to do a big fucking skull on my head? No. And like a snake? Nope. And like a big fucking thing on my chest? Not at all. All right, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's do a video for YouTube. And when we're doing it... Um, I'm trying to charge it, my phone, you twat. Make it educational. And then we'll we'll go ahead and do straight lines freehand, educationally. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds so, dumb, but whatever. Yeah, that's stupid. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. We're gonna create a huge following with this. Yeah, mark that shit. I just want us to have that on record. It's all going to be fine. Na 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 na. Book na 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 na.